Problem 8-27. The refrigerator has a weight of 180 pounds and rests on a tile floor for which mu sub s is equal to 0.25. Also, the man has a weight of 150 pounds and the coefficient of static friction between the floor and his shoes is mu sub s equals 0.6. If he pushes horizontally on the refrigerator, determine if he can move it. If so, does the refrigerator tip or slip? The first thing we need to do on this problem is recognize that there are three possible movements that can occur. One, the refrigerator can slip on the tile floor. Two, the refrigerator can tip about point A. And three, the, man, the man's shoes can slip on the tile floor. And the refrigerator would then not move at all. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw a free body diagram of our refrigerator. And so we are going to assume that the refrigerator is on the verge of slipping. And from that we're going to figure out what our force, our, our P is, the force applied by the man, and see if that's enough to make the refrigerator tip, or if that's going to make his shoes slip on the top floor. But we are, we're assuming that the, the fridge will slip and we'll see if that's correct or not. So the first thing we need to determine is the normal force exerted on the refrigerator. And to do that, we sum our forces in the y direction. We know that the, the weight of the refrigerator is 180 pounds, and so we find n is 180 pounds. We then sum our forces in the x direction. Um, since we only have two forces in the x direction, we have, we have friction and we have the force applied by the man. Uh, we recognize that when on the, on the verge of slipping, P is equal to F. And um, F is equal to mu sub S times N when on the verge of slipping, right at, at the moment before the refrigerator slips. And so mu sub S is equal to 0.25, and the weight of the refrigerator is 180 pounds. So that we then determine that P is equal to 45 pounds. Now, we then take a look at our, the possibility of the refrigerator tipping. And we need to determine where the normal force would have to act in order to counterbalance the moment caused by the force applied by the man. And so we create a sort of axis from point O. We start at point O, and we decide that x is the distance between O and where our normal force acts. And so we then sum our moments in the uh, about point O. Um, and so it's going to be our, our distance x times our normal force, let's take a look, is going to need to be counterbalanced by P times 4, which is the, the height. And then we de from that we determine that the normal force acts at a distance one foot from the center of the refrigerator uh, in the x direction. And that is still within the bounds of our refrigerator since our refrigerator is three feet wide. So it, it acts approximately you know, somewhere in this, in this region. Um, the last impending mo motion we need to determine, we need to analyze, is the man's feet, which uh, the, the possibility of the man's feet slipping. And so, what we need to do is start with our free body diagram here. Um, and we're going to determine the normal force, of course. So we sum our, our forces in the y direction. And we can determine that the normal force is equal to 150 pounds. We then see here on the free body diagram that our P, which is the... It, it is an equal and opposite force that is applied by the refrigerator on the man. So it's a self-consistent set of equations. Whereas in the first free body diagram we had the man's force uh, being applied to the refrigerator. The refrigerator, in turn, applies a force on the man, equal and opposite. So that's why that arrow is pointing in the negative x direction. All right, so then we need to sum our forces in the x direction. And we only have two forces. We have P exerted by the refrigerator under the man. It's going to need to be counterbalanced by our force of friction. Now, the force of friction 
is a maximum when s is equal to mu n. And we know that mu, mu of s, the, the, the coefficient of static friction of the man's shoes, is equal to 0 0.6. So we multiply that by the normal force that we just found to determine the force of friction on the man's feet. And once we've done that, we find that the force of friction on the man's feet is 90 pounds, which is greater than the force applied by the refrigerator onto the man. So we know that the man will not slip because his friction, the friction on his feet, the maximum friction that his shoes can make with the tile floor is greater than the maximum force that the refrigerator can apply back onto the man. And so there we, we then determine that um, since our force of friction is greater than the force applied by the refrigerator, uh, the refrigerator will not, I mean the man's shoes will not slip and the refrigerator will indeed slip. Um, and so our first assumption that the refrigerator will slip is correct. We've disproven um, the possibility of the refrigerator tipping and we've disproven the possibility of the man's shoes slipping.